Hey guys, it's Sam and this is my spoiler free review of Amberlow by Laura Elena Donnelly. This is the first book in an adult speculative fiction trilogy called the Amberlow Dossier and this takes place in a different world so it would technically be considered a fantasy world but there is no magic, there's no fantastical creatures, there is no alchemy, there's nothing like that. It's just that's why I kind of am categorizing it as speculative fiction because it's not really sci-fi, not really fantasy because I personally can't categorize something as fantasy that doesn't have magic or different creatures or something like that. So this takes place in a sort of like noir flapper spy era of another world. That's not ours. And it's a political noir art deco punk is what people have referred to it as. And I did listen to this book on audio. This was my Patreon book pick for the month. So every month my Patreon supporters get to vote in a poll for a book I will read and review that month. So if you are interested in picking the books I will read every month in 2020, I will leave my Patreon on the screen. So first off, I'm going to talk about the audiobook because I definitely recommend reading it on audio. It is narrated by Mary Robinette Kowal, who's one of my favorite audiobook narrators, and she does excellent voices. It's just like a performance completely, and she does such a good job. So if you are thinking about listening to the audio, highly recommend. So for First off, we talk about the world building. Like I said, this takes place in a world that is not our own. So a lot of the world building has to do with the like political differences. This is a lot about a kind of political coup that is happening during this time. But the city of Amberlow is where everything takes place. And Amberlow is definitely depicted as this sort of like city with a seedy underbelly, has a lot of like cabarets and things like that. And it does follow three characters. Two of them do work in the like cabaret scene. So you get to see a lot of like the criminal underground that sort of is attached to their lives and things like that. So there's a lot of that. And it just was a setting that I felt like I could get, especially because the narrator had all of these accents for people from different countries and different parts of the countries and different parts of the city. So that just made it feel like you were there. I will say that some of the political stuff went a little bit over my head because at the beginning especially I wasn't sure I was going to like this book because there was a lot of focus on some of this political stuff and these like different political parties that are kind of trying to take over and kind of what's going on under and behind the scenes. So that was a little bit confusing at first, but ultimately the plot and the characters are what pulled this through for me. So next when we talk about our characters, we follow three different perspectives and these are three very unique voices. Again, especially within the audiobook, but just in general, the way that they're written, you can definitely tell when you're in a different perspective. So the first one is Cyril and he works for sort of this like part of the spy agency and he's been a spy for some time and he's actually been kind of behind a desk for a while and is getting sent out back into the field. Then we have Aristide and he works at the cabaret but he's also a smuggler and that's how he comes in contact with Cyril and they have a long-standing romantic relationship and that is a big part of their story. And then Cordelia is another cabaret dancer and she obviously works with Aristide and she kind of gets pulled into everything that's going on with their story. And I really enjoyed all of them at first I had a hard time with Cordelia because the accent that's used for her in the audiobook is grating, but it works for her. And I had a hard time sometimes with the audiobook at first because I like to listen to my audiobooks on like two speed and I had to listen to it a little slower at first to like really hear all the accents because Aristide has a stutter and then Cordelia has like this really nasally, almost like New York sort of accent that's just like so over the top. So it was a little bit hard to listen to at first, but I grew to really enjoy them. And I actually really like all these characters. What's so interesting about these characters is you really grow to love them and then stuff starts happening throughout the story, especially later on in the story, where like they're part of the criminal underground, right? So like bad things are happening and there's, they do bad things to each other and to other people. And especially Aristide and Cyril kind of have this combative relationship because they have this romantic relationship that they have to keep under wraps and Aristide in particular sort of jabs at Cyril with his cabaret persona. Cyril ends up hurting a lot of people, especially towards the end, and Cordelia also has a thing, like a lot of the characters are sleeping with a lot of people. So if you have a problem with characters that do that, just know that that's just kind of the nature of this environment. But what I also really liked, and I forgot to mention about this, is that generally speaking, besides one political party, everyone doesn't really care about sexual orientation besides this one conservative political party that's trying to gain power. And so that was cool to see because you had that shown in a lot of the city, especially at the very beginning. And I really enjoyed seeing that. But anyway, I really liked these characters. I liked a lot of the side characters as well. And they all felt really real. So when things that are happening with the three main characters start affecting them, it's just sad. And this book just left me like 
ugh, at the end because I really felt so much for what they were going through. So next I'm gonna talk about the plot. Like I said, the plot is just very focused on a lot of the political maneuverings, but also how those political things are affecting the main characters and their relationships with each other and with other side characters and things. So that is what I really enjoyed. I just couldn't really put this book down. You kind of fly through it. I kept wanting to listen to the audiobook and I don't tend to like always want to put my audiobooks on but I just kept wanting to do that and when this ended this ends on I wouldn't quite call it a cliffhanger there's definitely very unresolved things like you're not going to necessarily want to put off the next book for a long time like I actually plan on if I can and I'm filming this in advance before I go home for the holidays but I plan on listening to the audiobook potentially when I'm driving home for the holidays of the second audiobook because I just kind of need to know what's happening and I was left feeling just like wretched at the end of this. Like I just was like worried for the characters and also some of the plot things hit a little bit close to home with like conservative governments taking over and all of this like really bad stuff and uh, there's a lot of things where like the governments are really shutting down like art and stuff and they the one government that's taking over is sort of like a step down or very similar to like Nazism so it's just like particularly awful and I was just left feeling like reeling from this book in a way that I wasn't expecting when I got into it. I thought I would like it but I wasn't sure what I was getting into. There's really no way to like fully describe this book so I ended up really enjoying it. Couldn't put it down and feel like so attached to the characters. So I ended up giving this 4 to 4.5 out of 5 stars. Like I said really enjoyed it and do plan on continuing the series as soon as possible and I will continue to listen to those on audiobook. So comment below, let me know your thoughts on Amber Lowe. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!